Hey guys, welcome back to another weekly reading vlog. So I am currently reading two books at the minute. The one I've been reading the longest I'm sure you won't be surprised about but that is A Storm of Swords by George R. R. Martin. This is the third book in the A Song of Ice and Fire series. It is just the first part of it. The UK editions are split into two parts and I am currently on page 397 so I have about 170 pages left so I'm pretty sure that I'm going to finish this this week. However, I was up last night until 3.30 a.m. watching the fifth episode of season eight of Game of Thrones and I really did not like that episode. It's sad because this is the best book in the series so far. Normally I preface statements like that with I think but objectively it's really good. This is really fast paced. There's a lot of stuff happening and I'm just sad because they're doing some questionable shit in the show and it's not to be fair it's not the stuff that they're doing it's just that it's very rushed and so a lot of the things that the characters are doing doesn't make a lot of sense because Game of Thrones is a slow paced TV show and having it so fast paced is impactful but you lose a lot of complexity of the characters and stuff. These books are enormous, there is so much to draw on and I just don't think that the show is doing a really good job of wrapping everything up concisely but that is a bit of a tangent. I know you guys always ask me what I thought of particularly dramatic episodes of Game of Thrones in this season because you know that I'm reading the series and I didn't like it. However I am enjoying this book. I am feeling a little bit disheartened because of the TV show but I have faith that George R.R. Martin will wrap up the series with the complexity and attention to characters that this series deserves and I have also heard a rumour that as soon as the show is over he will be announcing at least one of the next book which to be honest I'm not too surprised about because I feel like the smart move even if he finished writing the book about a year and a half ago would just be to wait until the show is over because at the minute emotions are running high people are really into the show a lot of people have reread the books in preparation for the show and have rewatched all of the show so everything is all about Game of Thrones at the minute and shortly after the show ends would be a really good time to announce at least one of those last two books. So the other book that I'm currently reading is one that I started today. I'm buddy reading this with JD Ray Reads. I'll link her channel in the description box below. She also does weekly reading vlogs so if that's something that you're into then I would recommend checking her out. But that book is Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo. This is a reread for me and Jade has never read them before. I've been meaning to reread this trilogy for a long time so that I can move on to Six of Crows, Language of Thorns and King of Scars. But I just haven't gotten around to it yet so Jade has given me the push that I finally needed to start this reread. I've read today's section. I actually need to message her. I'm up to page 65 in this and if all goes well then we should have this finished in about five days. If you don't know what this series is about it is a young adult fantasy that is set in a Russian inspired world and in this world you have people called the Grisha who have certain powers. There are some that can manipulate the body so they can either kill or cure. You have some that can manipulate the elements and some are crafters. Our main character Alina is not a Grisha. She is drafted into the army. However one day when they are crossing the fold which is this area of shadow where demons lurk and it's a very dangerous place that was created a very long time ago and has cut off the country of Ravka from the rest of the world essentially and when they are crossing the fold one day they are attacked and Alina discovers that she has some powers that she did not know she had. So like I said 65 pages in this is okay so far. I gave this four stars the first time around. I'm thinking it'll be a three or a four star read this time around. It's very tropey. It was written around 2015. So so it is very representative of the kind of young adult fantasy that was around at that time. I'm not expecting to really love this but I think that I will enjoy it probably about the same as I did last time. So because I forgot to mention it, Storm of Swords is my first book I play role to read an adult fantasy and Shadow and Bone I think is my fifth book I play role which is to read a young adult fantasy. Now I'm reading my Bookopoly books out of order this month which I don't normally do so those may not be completely accurate but I think that is about where we're at in the minute. So aside from my reading update I have two parcels to unbox for you today. These are belated birthday gifts. <laughs> this one is from Najwa who is one of my very close bookish friends. We have been friends for about a year now and she kindly sent me some gifts from my wish list. And this one is from Gav who is a very new booktuber and he is also doing a version of Bookopoly so if you guys like Bookopoly and want to see an alternative version then I would recommend Gav's channel. I will link him down in the description box below. He is a very high energy sweet cinnamon roll Jordy and I love him to bits. So these two arrived for me today and let's see what's inside them. 
So starting off with the one from Najwa, we have the Boneless Mercies by April Genevieve Ch Ch Cholke. I think that's how you say it. This is a young adult fantasy. I'm not entirely sure what this is about. It was getting a little bit of hype around the end of last year and the cover is absolutely beautiful and the premise does sound interesting. All I know is that it follows a band of, I think, women because only women can do the job in this world. But it is a group of women who kill people and that premise really intrigued me. Ooh, also from Najwa, we have Senlin Ascends by Josiah Bancroft. Now, this is an adult fantasy that comes highly recommended by Mel to the any and Mel to the any is another like absolutely fabulous booktuber and she's reasonably new she's been around like most of this year and I think she started her channel in December but she absolutely loves this series and so I thought I would check it out I hadn't heard of it when Mel mentioned it but since then I've seen it in my bookstore a lot and it just keeps intriguing me as usual with me and adult high fantasy I don't really know what this is about but this is the first book in the books of Babel trilogy and I believe it's kind of a retelling of some folk tale or fairy tale type thing but I'm not in entirely sure which one. Just read my gift note and it's like super cute. So thank you so much Najwa for these two books. I really can't wait to get to them. I try to prioritize the books that are sent to me from my bookish friends so it's very likely that I will be reading at least one of these sometime soon. Okay so now we have the mystery parcel from Gav. Now this is from Waterstones and Gav works at Waterstones so this I don't believe will be on my wish list or anything. This is a complete mystery. I'm guessing Gav has chosen this for me and I literally have no idea what it is because this parcel is chunky and heavy. Okay, should I should I put my hand in? Whatever it is, it's shrink wrapped. Oh my god. Oh, this is the leather bound edition of Game of Thrones. Oh my god. Let me unwrap this for you guys. So these come in a slip case. They are gold detailed and oh, it's beautiful. They have the map of Westeros on the front and back covers and they have gold pages and the end pages. Oh my God. I, I can't, I can't. With, I, Gav, what are you doing? I know how much these cost and I know you get discount because you work at Waterstones. But this is like, seriously, thank you so much. I'm I'm still in shock, but <laughs> thank you so much, Gavin, for the leather-bound edition of Game of Thrones. I'm, I'm blown away. I know I've just said it like 10 times, but thank you so much to Gavin and Najwa for these wonderful books. I am constantly blown away and astounded by the generosity of this community and the awesome friends that I've made in the time that I've been here. I did not come on booktube looking for friendship necessarily. I came here to talk about books and the fact that I've made such good friends who are more than just friends that I communicate that are because they're fellow creators or because we love books just seriously blows my mind and I'm so thankful for all of my bookish friends. So that is all I have for you guys for now. I have some dinner in the oven that I need to go check on. I'm going to spend the rest of the day editing last week's vlog and tomorrow is date night. We're going to see Detective Pikachu at the cinema. Not sure if I will have time to check in before we go because I'm wanting to film film a mid-month wrap-up but if I have anything to update you on I will try and pop on sometime tomorrow. Hey guys so I am just about to head out. I think I told you yesterday that it is date night tonight. We are going to see Detective Pikachu and get some food. I'm getting Mexican food again. I'm gonna try maybe some fajitas this time. I have eaten fajitas before so like that's not a new food to me but I haven't had them from a Mexican restaurant so we'll see how that goes. So I don't really have much of a reading update for you guys. I'm on around page 135-ish of Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo and I'm on around page 440 of Storm of Swords. My feelings on them are still the same. So that's why I said I don't really have much of an update. But I've read my daily section for Shadow and Bone so far today. So I will be continuing with Storm of Swords at some point tonight, maybe on the drive to the cinema. But I received two books today. These are once again from Gavin. I think I mentioned yesterday that he works at Waterstones. At Waterstones they have books of the month for each individual like area of the store. And Gavin works in the 
children's section and they were offering him extra copies of the children's book of the month and he kindly sent me a copy as he already has one and has read it. So that book is Malamanda by Thomas Taylor. Now I don't know much about what this is about. I will read the back for you in just a second because it sounds really intriguing but the cover is absolutely stunning. Every time I go into Waterstones I marvel at how beautiful the children's books are because they just look so magical and beautiful. <laughs> also I really want to show you the edges on there. They have the skyline from the front that runs over to the edges and they are absolutely stunning. So this seems to be a children's fantasy. I will read you the back like I said. Who will uncover the secret of the Malamander? In the basement of the Grand Nautilus Hotel, a mysterious girl crashes into Herbie Lemon's room and cries, hide me. In the window of the eerie book dispensary, a mechanical mare monkey sits and waits. And out beyond the pier, something stares. Could the legendary Malamander have returned? So I'm super interested in this. It sounds so mysterious and magical and I can't wait to read it. Unexpectedly, he did also send me a copy of Rebecca Skye's debut novel, Arrowheart. Now this seems to be a young adult contemporary by looking at it. However, on the back it says, they tell me it's a gift that I'm descended from the gods and that my kiss can make any guy fall in love with me. But it feels like a curse. The power in me seems monstrous. I don't want to force love. So I'm guessing that this is going to be a contemporary with kind of a mythological aspect. I don't know much about this. Rebecca Skye does seem like a lovely, lovely lady though. And as this is her debut novel, I'm so happy to have a copy and to show it off a little bit for you guys. While it's coming into the summer months, I will be a lot more interested in contemporary because they are perfect for reading in the garden. They're really fast reads. They're really light and really fun. So hopefully I'll get to this this summer. So that's what I got for you at the moment. Like I said, I'm going to see Detective Pikachu. I may pop in and let you know what I thought about it. It has been a very popular movie. It is getting excellent reviews and it knocked Endgame off the box office slot this opening weekend. So I'm interested to see what I think. We are mainly going for my boyfriend's benefit. He loves Pokemon. I mean, I love Pokemon or I did when I was a kid, but it's definitely more of a thing for him than it is for me. I'm just excited to see the Bulbasaur's. From a whisper Hey guys, so it's been a couple of days but essentially I've just been reading the same two books and I hadn't finished any so I didn't really want to just come in and be like I'm on page whatever of this book but now I have finished a book so we have a reading update. So today I finished Storm of Swords part one, Steel and Snow by George R. R. Martin. I actually thought I would only finish this tomorrow so I'm so happy to be bringing you this update a day earlier. I gave this five stars, I absolutely loved it. There is so much that happens in this and it's kind of strange you know because the first book is set up and it establishes the world, the characters and all of the houses etc. And then the second book is really slow and political and deals with a lot of the powerful people in the politics section of the world and what they're doing regarding the war. And then in the third book I'm pretty sure there is a big event that happens to every single character. So obviously there are a few big things that do happen in this third book but they haven't happened in the first section, they happen in part two. But still, there are monumental things going on in the lives of all the characters. Something that happens that's pretty big to Jamie goes on in this book, as well as Sansa and Tyrion. And this was just so compelling. It did take me a little while because I have been reading other books alongside it. And I do like to take my time with the A Song of Ice and Fire books, but I absolutely love this one. And now I'm really excited to move on to part two next month. Part two is slightly smaller as well, only by about 30 pages, but because I flew through this and I expect the second part to be just as compelling, I'm pretty excited about that one. So regarding Shadow and Bone, I am on page 268. I have 40 pages left. I have read my section for today, so I won't be reading any more of this tonight. I'm not really gonna tell you my feelings on this because I am going to finish this tomorrow. We have our last section of 40 pages tomorrow. So I'll just give you my full review on this tomorrow. Because I can't read any more of Shadow and Bone tonight and I have finished Storm of Swords, I will be picking up a new book. It is still Bingo-a-thon, which I should probably mention actually. The prompt that I have this set out for is to read a five star prediction gave it five stars. This would also double up for a book in my favourite genre if I didn't finish the book for my favourite genre, but that is this one, so I'll pretty much get through that. This could also double up for the one with pink and blue on a cover if I don't get to that one. Also, this is very old on my TBR, so it would fulfil that challenge as well. So as we have 
two days and the rest of tonight of Bingo Athon left. I am going to attempt to start and finish this book in those two days. Essentially my entire Bingo Athon TBR rests on this one book and that is Once and Future by Amy Rose Capetta and Cory MacArthur. This is the group book. I also have it down for completing the challenges to read a book with pink or blue on the cover, to read a book with diverse aspects, to read a book that is either really new or really old on my TBR. The last challenge I have this down for is to read a book by a new to me author. So Cody from Cody's Book Corner kindly bought me this for my birthday so I do want to get to it pretty soon and the fact that it is the group book for Bingo Athon is just the perfect excuse. So this is a gender bent Knights of the Round Table retelling set in space. Our main character Ari takes on the characterization of the King Arthur figure. To be honest I haven't heard great things about this. I put it on my Amazon wishlist and then two days afterwards I watched a video from Maddie the book pusher and she DNF'd it and I was like oh, shit. Are you ready oh, for this? Shit. We do disagree on some books. Um, Maddie does have like a lot of strong opinions and she's very sassy. All of our opinions are not the same. I have enjoyed books that she's absolutely hated and vice versa but that just felt like a bad omen to me. Since then I know that Cody started it and wasn't feeling it straight away. Ola the creator of the readathon gave it 2.5 or 3 stars and in her comments of her rating there have been a few people who have said that they don't really love it but I am optimistic. I like Arthurian legend. I love Arthurian legend actually and that all stemmed from reading Avalon High by Meg Cabot when I was like a teenager. I really need to reread that book but I don't own it so I'm gonna do that sometime soon. And I also really love sci-fi so I'm hoping this is a hit for me. I think there's some pretty angsty romance in here but we'll see how it goes. So I'm going to try and at least a couple of chapters of this tonight but when I check in with you guys tomorrow to wrap up Shadow and Bone I'll let you know what I think about this so far. Appreciate my like triple dog situation going on here. Hey guys, so I was supposed to come and check in with you yesterday and give you my full thoughts on the Grisha by or Shadow and Bone by Lee Badugo. But I went to my weights class for the first time in about six months yesterday and my boyfriend got a haircut after work which took quite some time and then I pretty much came home, had some food and went straight to the gym. And then after that I was pretty tired so I never came and checked in with you guys. My thighs are killing me today. My boyfriend took a short clip of me trying to walk down the stairs in Waterstones when we were in Hull earlier today. So um, I will insert that here if I haven't used it already. <laughs> I had to nip into the city today like I didn't really want to but the inside like the lining of my slippers has started to come through a hole that's worn through so I had to go and get some new ones and also my handbag that I used for work the lining has ripped and the strap is coming off so I needed to get a new one of those as well so I nipped into hull and I had to go to Primark and get some bits. I'm back now, my thighs, like my legs are literally about to drop off. But yesterday I did finish Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo. I gave this four stars and I liked it a lot more than I thought I would rereading it. I remember that when I read it in 2015, I think I read it directly after I read Red Queen. There are a lot of similarities in that. You have a girl who comes into powers that she didn't know that she had and is taken away to a place where she's raised to almost royalty. The thing with the Darkling, there's a character very similar to the Darkling in Red Queen as well and I loved Red Queen so much that I didn't like the Grisha as much. Now I still like Red Queen more and I still don't think that this is like five star worthy but I still 
really liked this. I think because of the time that I read it last time and the comparison to Red Queen, in my mind as time has gone on I have sort of assumed that it wasn't very well written and it was extremely tropey, which is kind of tropey but it was written in 2014, 2012, something like that. 2012. So like it is tropey for YA but I still think that there is like a strong storyline here. It could definitely be more well developed, there's definitely room for a lot more depth in here. Throughout the story Mal just appears like when it's convenient for him to arrive and aside from that he's just not really in the story at all. The thing that I will say about this that I didn't have at the time that I read it back in the day is that the romance didn't really do anything for me like any of the romantic aspects in this I just wasn't really interested in but something I've noticed rereading it is that I don't hate Mal as much as I did the first time around and I'm not sure if that's because I know the full character arc of the Darkling that I'm not so against Mal as I was to start off with. So I'm definitely interested to see how I continue to feel about this series going forwards. So on Thursday night I started Once and Future by Amy Rose Capetta and Corey McCarthy. I did actually look into the authors of this around the time that I started reading it. I knew that the authors of this were engaged but what I didn't know is that Corey McCarthy is a trans non-binary person which I found was really interesting. This book is super diverse. You have non-binary characters called fluids. All of the romantic relationships in this are same-sex couples so you have flirtations between two male characters and also a female-female relationship in this. As well as that the main character is of Arabic descent and there are also black characters in this so it is very diverse. So this is a King Arthur Knights of the Round Table retelling and in this storyline Arthur keeps being reincarnated and every time he is reincarnated Merlin wakes up from a deep sleep and and is sent to help them accomplish the task that the original King Arthur never completed because he was killed on the battlefield by his son for he could unite humanity and do whatever came after that. The only thing is that Merlin is aging backwards so at this point we are on the 40 something reincarnation of Arthur and Merlin is at around age 17. So our main character Ari is this reincarnation of King Arthur and she essentially lives on the run because she is part of a civilization that has been walled off by this sort of super evil corporation called Mercer and one day two women found her and took her into their family. They also had a son who becomes like Ari's adopted brother. Later on Ari decides that she wants to try and get back into the home that is walled off to see if she can find her real parents and her new adoptive mothers get captured and sent to prison. Now this story starts off where Ari is hiding out, they're trying to get supplies, her and her brother, and she tries to look into the location of of her mothers so that they can try to free them. That sets off some alarm bells which sends Mercer after them and they crash land on planet Earth which has been retired because this is a space story set in the future. And when she is there she finds Excalibur and pulls it out of a tree which then awakens Merlin and Merlin comes along and is trying to guide her along the path of her destiny which is to fulfill everything that Arthur accomplished but in a modern context but complete the end of the story which will hopefully break the cycle that stops Merlin from aging backwards and being put in this deep hibernation etc etc. So my enjoyment of this so far it's not particularly detailed. This is a very plot driven story and I do really wish that it was more character driven because we have quite a large cast of characters. We have the reincarnations of Lancelot Percival and Guinevere but I find that a lot of the male characters in this like really blend together. For the females we have Ari who is the reincarnation of Arthur, there is Guinevere and there is also Jordan who is sort of Guinevere's protector and then we have three male characters and Merlin and three male characters just keep blending together in my mind. This is shaping up to be a three star read for me. I am on page 206 so yesterday I did read half of this and I've read another 30 to 40 pages today but it's shaping up to be a three star read. It really is reminding me so far of Invictus by Ryan Grodin. It is like a fun sci-fi story that is very plot driven with a cast of characters that are kind of like family and I am enjoying it. I've heard some pretty mixed and bad things about this. It is kind of like middle of the road YA so like maybe age 14 to 16 would be the perfect age range to read this book but I am enjoying the fun storyline. It's just the fast pacing of it and the way that it's a lot more plot driven than character driven is making it hard to follow in some places just because things keep happening and there is no like foreshadowing or deep plot structure of why these things are happening. It's just kind 
kind of a fun plot driven story. So that's where I'm up to with this. I want to finish this today because today is the last day of bingo -thon and this will check off every challenge that I have left on the board. I'm not going to get to the Song of Achilles but I may start that tomorrow. That will definitely be read in May, it just won't be read during bingo -thon. But I am putting this down for the minute because I am currently filming a try a chapter tag and like an unhaul edition which you guys should see like on the day that I'm filming this it will be tomorrow but on the day that you're watching this it will have already happened so I will tag it up here if you have not watched it yet. I'm just trying to unhaul some books really and I've pretty much culled my shelves of everything that I'm really not interested in so now I'm just sampling the first chapter of a few books to see which ones I could maybe part with. Hey guys so full disclosure I just woke up for a nap. It's nearly midnight on Sunday and I really want to stay up and watch Game of Thrones but I've had a bad mental health day and I'm really tired. I don't know if the tiredness is because I've been to the gym so my body needs more sleep to recover from the excruciating pain in my thighs but mental health wise I've just had a not great day. There's nothing too deep that I just I'm a high functioning person and I kind of wanted a chill day to like just take a step back and enjoy myself and they don't typically go very well for me and I start to feel very unsettled so I thought a nap was for the best and it was but two hours till Game of Thrones and I kind of just want to go to sleep and at this point going to sleep is more appealing than watching Game of Thrones but it is the last episode ever so I kind of want to be in with the hype with everybody who's watching it live but we'll see what I do because like I said it's the last episode surely I can pull it together for one last time so literally just before I passed out <laughs> from my nap I finished Once a Future by Amy Rose Capetta and Corey McCarthy I said I was going to finish this yesterday and I totally could have but I was just like full on procrastinating reading and the same today. I do this thing like when I'm not feeling good with like mental health and stuff. I don't want to do anything that seems like an obligation and while I definitely enjoy reading and I don't logically see it as an obligation, my brain attaches it to YouTube and all of the videos that I could be filming, editing, etc. And I just don't want to do it. I want to watch TV and play Xbox and that's pretty much it. So procrastinating on this for so long that I had to like physically make myself come over to bed and read. And giving this, I think I gave it three stars. Um, I was torn between two and three for quite some time. This is very convenient. It lacks a lot of complexity that it could have the bones of a really great story here but it's too fast paced and too plot driven to really hit the mark for me. The diversity in here is on point. So many different representations of sexuality and gender in here and quite a bit of like POC rap. I will say that it's oddly sexual like there are sexual encounters going on left right and center in a way that just does not seem very fluid or natural um, so it can be a little bit jarring sometimes when it's like oh these people are now groping each other but it was fun so I'm somewhere between a two and a three on this because I don't think it's great but I kind of enjoyed the ride. Very tongue-in-cheek if you want to read this suspend your disbelief unless you really like just plot driven books but then the plot isn't particularly well thought out so oh I don't know but it's definitely fun just lower your expectations suspend your disbelief and you'll have a fun time reading this one so that was my last book for bingo with on and even though bingo with on ended yesterday I'm still carrying it so I always have strange feelings about readathons that go from like Sunday to Saturday and I just run over until the end of the week anyway I would have liked to have finished this with it not being on my bookopoly tbr like yesterday so I could move on today but it's no big deal. So as it is technically five minutes until the week is over, I don't think I'll be picking up another book today. I do know what I'm gonna be picking up tomorrow, but that's for next week's vlog, you know, it gives me a reason to do a Monday check-in. Also, I probably should say, I always get really lax at the end of readathons, but this checks off all of the remaining challenges that I had, which was to read a book by a new to me author, read a book that's new to your TBR, a book with pink and blue on the cover, read a diverse book, and the group book. I think that was all of them. All bingo thon challenges completed just a day late. So that is everything for this week's vlog. I've ended a book and ended a week. I like it when that happens. Please don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you want to, and I'll catch you next week, guys. Bye. Oh, you bite your friend like chocolate. You say you're a go where nobody knows. With guns sitting under our petticoats. We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no.